สวัสดีครับผมอาจารย์ปราดรายการ o d i Live Music is not what I do is who I am นะครับดนตรีไม่ใช่แค่สิ่งที่เราทำแต่เป็นสิ่งที่เราเป็นนะครับวันนี้ผมมีโอกาสได้พูดคุยกับมือกีตาร์ระดับโลกท่านหนึ่งก็คือพอลคิเบิร์ตนั่นเองนะครับถ้าคุณเป็นสายที่ต้องเล่นความเร็วนะครับถ้าคุณเป็นมือกีตาร์สายร็อกเนี่ยคุณจะรู้จักพอลคิเบิร์ตนะครับพอลคิเบิร์ตเป็นมือกีตาร์วงมิสเตอร์บิ๊กนะครับตั้งแต่เลเซอร์เอ็กเลยแล้วก็มามิสเตอร์บิ๊กนะครับแล้วก็มีผลงานของตนเองนะครับเป็นมีกีตาร์ที่มีทั้งทักษะมีทั้งมิวสิคอลดีมากๆนะครับวันนี้เขามาบอกความรับมาบอกเส้นทางรัดหลายๆอย่างนะครับในการเล่นกีตาร์ซึ่งเขาแนะนําไว้ดีมากๆเลยนะครับเราไปดูกันครับกับ o v e r d i v e Live Paul g i b e r Project in C. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Here's the Paul Cuber, na kap. Yeah, welcome to Thailand. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Yeah. Okay. First question. Uh, I want to know uh, when you was young. What do you listening? What you What do you play? What do you start to play guitar? When I was a kid. Yeah. When you was young. Uh, well, I, I wanted to be a singer. Cause okay. Because I, I love the Beatles. Okay. I'm so. Uh, I, and I, I didn't really know what guitar was. I, I thought it looked cool. Okay. <laughs> but you know, if you listen to a Beatles record, the vocals are really loud. Uh -huh. Oh and yes, yes. One, once in a while, you might hear like, you know, a guitar. Okay. Riff, but, but mostly it's vocal music. So oh, yeah, I, I yeah. didn't really know about guitar until a couple years later when I heard like Led Zeppelin. Uh huh. And Jimi Hendrix. Okay. And then you start to notice guitar you know, is the guitar a little more. You know. Like, okay. Uh -huh. Jimmy Page, you know. <laughs> you know. That was I love that. Okay, and on uh, that time, you you just listen from the radio and try to play or something. Well, my parents had a lot of records. They had okay. the, you know, Beatles and the Stones okay. and the Who, mm -hmm. uh, and classical music. 
Oh. And blues. My dad had a lot of BB King. Okay. And uh, Muddy Waters mm -hmm. and uh, you know what's uh, John, John Lee Hooker. Yeah, those okay. records. Okay. Okay. Um, but on the on the radio, I heard Led Zeppelin. Okay. And also my uncle. Mm. Uh, was a great guitar player. He still is. Okay. And he turned me on to Jimi Hendrix okay. and uh, David Bowie with Mick Ronson. Okay. In the band and uh, punk bands like like Iggy and the Stooges and the MC5. Okay. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, so and then of course later I got into bands with other kid, other people. Mm -hmm. And so you know, I would join a band, and it was always with older kids. Uh -huh. Maybe I, I would be twelve, and they would oh. be like sixteen or seventeen. Oh, you twelve? Yeah, and, and, and they would be sixteen. Okay. Yeah, so uh -huh. they, they would say like, "Oh, check out Rush," or, or check okay. out you know, Todd Rundgren, or or, okay. or Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Okay. So oh, you know, or, uh, from, from, from being in yeah. band, it was almost. Like, I don't have an older brother, but the you know, when okay. you join a band, it's almost like having older brothers. Okay. And and at that time, you play by ear. Well, uh, it's, a, it's a complicated story, but I'll try to make it short. Okay, okay. When I, when I was six years old, okay. I took some guitar lessons. Okay. And it was actually sight reading. Okay. You know, oh, okay. But it was very boring okay. sight reading. You know, it was like... Uh, <laughs> okay. You know, and, and you I just... You don't like it? I, I didn't like that. I wanted to play rock guitar. Okay. So I, I quit. Okay. And when I was nine years old, okay. I started playing by ear. But I didn't know how to play. I had, I had no teacher. Okay. So I just like how do you, start? you know, I had no idea what to do, and I held the pick funny, and I, I only used one finger. I didn't know how to tune. Okay. So it was really rough. Uh huh. But uh, I would still figure out, you know, just basic riffs. I you know, did only upstrokes. Oh, okay, for, for, yeah, for, yeah, I heard about for that. For two years, I went like. <laughs> so I played like that for about two years. Two years. Yeah, and. Um, Finally, I started taking lessons when I was 11. Okay. And my teacher said, "Hey, you can do downstrokes too, <laughs> too, you know, and you can use the other fingers. And here's how you tune. And here's a chord, you know. And uh, um. and, and suddenly, I started to progress very quickly now that I had this mm. knowledge. Mm. And he showed me rock songs. He taught, you know, showed me Black Sabbath and okay. and that kind of things in a pentatonic scale. So uh -huh. you know, suddenly, I could, I was doing much better. Okay." When uh, I, I heard about when you play the speed picking, mm -hmm. on when when you first playing, you play the pick upside down. Yeah, I used to hold it like this, and I really? actually I still I, I hold the pick so many different ways. Like if, if I'm strumming, okay. For example, if I go, okay, it's upside down. I hold it with two fingers, okay, and the thumb, okay, and that, I do that also for pick scratches. That's, okay, that's two and, uh -huh. and it's nice because you can easily put the pick. There, uh, uh -huh. which is good for for, for finger picking, you know. Mm. Or it's good for two-handed stuff. You know. mm. The pick mm. is right there. Okay. And of course, it's, it's also it's great for like shuffles, like when I'm doing that. Mm. So a lot of my like looser, strummier mm. playing, you know, if mm -hmm. I do like a like Hendrix Killing Floor. Okay, like that, okay. Uh, oh yeah. That's all the, the two fingers. Mm, but if I want to be more by, by pre two. precise now, I'll hold it with the one finger. Okay. And that's more the... Uh, mm. That's like kind of smaller. Mm. It's actually not as much fun. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh -huh. I, I do both of those mm. and... Uh, I still do that. Yeah, there, there's so many. I mean, there's so many tones you can get mm. out of the pick. So, you know, to, to me, it, like when I teach, I always tell the students you have to like work on um, being able to mute with your pick, like go, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where it's very short instead mm. of. Mm, it's long. Be able to do that, so, and that's really a cool sound to be able to go like. What kind of Michael Schenker? Mm -hmm. ah, 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 ah. Uh. And it's, you know, it has a lot of attitude. So it's, mm -hmm. the pick to me is it's not about speed; it's about tone. Mm -hmm. What what kind of pick do you use? Is thin? I use a really thin pick. It's a 0.50. Oh, really? Really thin. Really good for pick scratches. So when you do that, those always uh -huh. sound good. 
Okay. And they're good for you know. Oh for, yeah. For, for for banging away. You know. And and when you play speed picking, it, you you. When you, I when I play fast, I have to play a little harder. Okay. Which is kind of good because on stage I've got all this adrenaline. Uh huh. And so you know. <laughs> you can still it, it works fine. Mm, All purpose good tone. Oh wow! And then never never know that before. You play really thin. Well, I, I used to use heavier ones when I was a teenager, but okay, uh, okay. Then. Well, actually, when I was a teenager, it was medium. Okay. And then, like the 20s and 30s, it was heavier, and, and now I've been going lighter and lighter. Oh, okay, okay, that's good. But uh huh. What kind of the formal training did you have? From the teacher, from the school, from the well, I did. I went to to GIT for a year. Oh yeah. In okay. 1984, I was 17. I just got out of high school. Okay. And so we we learned music theory and a lot of ear training. And, okay. And I was I'm really happy I did that. It was you know. You 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 in a GIT one year. It was one year. Okay. But after I graduated, I became a teacher. Then. At that same school. Okay. So I was 18. Then I was 18 years old, and uh, and of course I didn't know everything. You know. <laughs> I was just like, you know, yeah. I, I could play a lot of good rock stuff, but oh, I, okay. you know, I didn't know jazz. But I got to stay in the building and hang out with the teachers. Okay. So even though I wasn't officially a student anymore, okay, I still learned a lot. Okay. Because you know, I, in a way, oh. I was still in the building for more, you know, two two more years. Okay. Oh, two more years. You, you yeah, because then Mr. Big got so we were oh, so touring so no much. Time. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't be there all the time. Mm, okay. Whoa. And JT is it is this helps a lot. Well, most of the teaching I do now is online. I have an I have an online rock guitar school. By now? Yeah, right now with a, with a company called Artist Works. Okay. I've okay. been doing it for six years. Okay. And I, the way it works is the student sends in a video. And I watch it and listen. Okay. And then I send a video reply. Okay. Like, so it's like a question and answer. Oh. They're put together, and then that goes on the school, and everybody can watch it. Mm. So even even if I only do one video. You know, okay. a thousand people can check it out, mm. and uh, I've done more than six thousand videos. You do every day. You do every day. Yeah. Well, t today already I put five on. You know, just, <laughs> <laughs> just, oh yeah. wow! Yeah. So it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's a. Uh, it's, it's a lot of hard work. A lot of work, but it's you know I'm playing yeah, guitar. Play and, it's, 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 and it makes me. Uh, it keeps me very involved in, in music and 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 the instrument. Just knowing. I, I know so much more about guitar than I than I did now or I did before. Okay. You know, I can just look. I can just look at somebody, a picture of somebody, and I kind of know what their problems are already. <laughs> okay. 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 If someone wants to play fast, mm -hmm. do you have any exercise for such as? Well, for whether they want to play fast or slow or anything. Okay. I want them to sound good. Okay. And one of the most important things for sounding good is to be able to play in time. Okay. And mm -hmm. so I make everybody. Stomp their foot. Mm. The, you, you know the metronome. People have use metronomes. Yep. And they ignore them completely. Really? Yeah. So they put on the metronome and then they don't listen to it. Mm. And also, even if you do listen to it, it's so much more powerful if the metronome is you. Mm. So I'll have them do you know things where they can handle the downbeat, and then have a syncopated beat like, for example, if you go. Da, 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 da. Mm. Which would be like, uh, or something as simple as like the Kinks. You know, that's that's a little tricky to coordinate because it's different. Or, or like one and two and three and four. So this is, it's all in the same grid, but it's not the same. Mm. So, um, you know, whether you're playing slow or fast, okay. you got to be able to feel the time, otherwise it's useless. It's, it's like having a, a, a great boat, and you put it in the water and it sinks. Okay. <laughs> oh. And I want everybody's boat to, to float. Mm. So, you know, before we do anything, I always say, you got to play in time. Mm. And then you have to, when you, again, slow or fast, okay. you've got to be able to get into it and out of it. You have to have mm. transitions. Mm. So it's like, what comes before the fast play, and okay. what comes after it? Mm. You know, you got to connect it. Mm. You know, if it's just this thing by itself, you'll never be able to use it. Mm. So you first, you develop your groove. So like, uh, you'll, you'll see when I play with Mr. Big. Every night I go out and I play the groove from um, okay. uh, what is it? Uh, back in Black, Bass and DC. Okay. So I go like. Actually, I'm gonna stomp on every beat. That's two and four. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do all beats like one, okay. two, three, four. And then the, the trick 
is I start improvising. Okay. And then I work in the fast phrases so they connect. Okay. Because they've got to work with everything else. You know. <laughs> In there, I was going, but the the cock, the the cock, the the So, if you, but it's got to fit in the groove, otherwise, mm. you can't use it. Okay. I want you to be able to use it. I want <laughs> the boat to float. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And how, how about when you playing? When you play the guitar, mm -hmm. uh huh. Look like you care a lot of music, be more than technique. How about music and technique? What do you think? Which one is important? Oh, what's the first one? Well, hopefully, together. I mean, the, the whole reason to have technique is to play music. Oh. Okay. Um, but mm -hmm. I think what happens is when people think of like technique, they usually think of oh, being able to play a scale up and down. Okay. Uh huh. And if you listen to to most music, it's not scales up and down. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so a lot of times I try to listen to, to vocalists. Okay. I think, you know, very few you know, rock singers sit mm -hmm. around and sing scales. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But if you work out how to play a vocal melody, okay. so for example, you know, uh, Janis Joplin, legendary okay. rock singer, uh -huh. has a song called Mercedes Benz. Okay. It's only vocals. Mm -hmm. And her, actually she's stomping too. It goes mm -hmm. like, like, oh Lord, won't you buy me? And Mercedes Benz. And so I try to work that on a guitar. Like one, two, three. Okay. That's such a different way mm. than, and if I want to play a scale, okay. then I want to know, you know, let's see, then I want to be able to play it in the groove. Okay. Like I want to swing it, like. Mm. And that, that to me is not as cool as the vocal part was, but. Mm. You know, <laughs> find these little things but I guess this is the, is the thing with with like the faster stuff mm -hmm. is every shape mm -hmm. on the fretboard okay. has rhythms living inside of it mm. it's like a little mm. drum set living on your, okay, on your guitar okay, I got it. but uh -huh. de depending on on you know how it's laid out mm -hmm. it's, it's the rhythms are different mm. like if you have a three note per string okay. thing that's going to have different rhythmic mm. possibilities mm. than if it's tuna per string or if it's some combination of okay. both. Mm. So um, that's the thing is to like explore the fingerings from a rhythmic and melodic mm -hmm. standpoint. Rather, I mean, of course, you have to start somewhere. So everybody practices scales, at some, mm. but as soon as you can, mm -hmm. start playing melodies. Okay, uh, it's, it's, it's so can. much more useful. Mm. Paul Gilbert. <laughs>
ยังไม่จบนะครับกับ h o กี้เบิร์ดเดี๋ยวครั้งหน้าจะเป็นตอนจบของบทสัมภาษณ์นี้นะครับได้ฟังแล้วเป็นไงครับถ้าคุณเป็นมือกีตาร์เนี่ยโอ้ปฏิบัติตามเขานะครับไม่ว่าจะเป็นเรื่องของซาวเรื่องอะไรหลายๆอย่างที่เขาแนะนำเนี่ยบางทีเรามองแค่เรื่องของเทคนิคอย่างเดียวพอกิเบิร์ดไม่ได้มองเทคนิคอย่างเดียวนะครับโอเคนั้นก่อนจะจบนะครับผมก็ฝากงาน Overdrive Use Band Contest นะครับซึ่งก็เริ่มเปิดส่งผลงานกันเข้ามาได้นะครับกติกาก็ตามนี้นะครับวงไม่เกิน7คนนะครับหนึ่งเพลงจะเป็นเพลงออริจินอลหรือโคเบอร์ก็ได้นะครับดูกติกาหรือเข้าไปดูกติกากันที่ Overdrive Use Band นะครับที่ Facebook นะครับมีกติกาอยู่ที่นั่นส่งเงินเข้ามานะครับเพียงแต่อายุไม่เกิน22เท่านั้นเองทุกสตาร์นะครับฝาก Overdrive Use Band ตรงนี้ไว้ด้วยนะครับโอเคนั้นวันนี้ผมก็คงต้องลาไปก่อนกับ Overdrive Live นะครับ Music is not what I do is w h o I am สวัสดีครับ